just got orders. You're moving to Germany. It's your first overseas assignment. There's a thousand things you have to do in a short amount of time. You and your spouse are active and busy. Your kids are active and busy. Where do I start? What's up everybody? I am Daniel. This is DTV. Welcome back to the channel. For those that don't know or that are new, uh, I am a local travel video blogger and I focus on three things for incoming military families. PCS prep, travel, and local life as an American living here in Germany. So today's episode is going to be all about baggage. What do I bring to Germany? I feel like I've been seeing this question a lot online and I wanted to help you out. That was a lot of emotions that we touched on in the beginning there. Don't stress, don't stress. So I'm going to be going over the three most common ways to bring luggage or baggage over here to Germany. Unaccompanied baggage, household goods, and personal luggage. So before we get into all of this, I want to let you know that uh, if you are PCSing to Germany and you are stressed out, you don't know where to begin, it's your first time doing this, relax, I got you. I am here to help. So I've been stationed in Germany for seven plus years now. We got here in 2014 and I remember coming here and everything being super stressful, a thousand different things that you had to do and appointments you had to make and pets and kids, get all your stuff packed up, say goodbye to everyone. It's crazy, I know, I get it, I get it. But I have created a ultimate PCS checklist. And what that's gonna do for you is it's going to kickstart your journey into transitioning from the United States over here to Germany. And I am literally gonna go over a small section of that ultimate PCS checklist, which is just baggage, and go over everything that you need to bring or should bring or should think about bringing uh, before you come over here. So if you wanna check that out, I've got two different checklists. I've got a free PCS to Germany checklist that kind of just get, you, get the ball rolling to get you started. And then I've got the ultimate PCS checklist, which is actually uh, what I'm gonna be going over today uh, with regards to baggage. So I'll leave a link in the description. There should be something popping up around here or something so that you can get to those checklists a little bit easier. Okay, so unaccompanied baggage. We're gonna start with that one first. Uh, so what is it? Well, you are authorized a certain amount of baggage based on your rank and based on the size of your family or your dependents. Think of it as like your expedited baggage. So these are the stuff that's supposed to get there first. Uh, on average, it takes about four to six weeks after shipment. I've heard of situations where it's been a little bit longer, but uh, primarily, this baggage is supposed to get there first. So how much weight are you actually authorized? That is a really good question. So what I'm going to do is leave a link in the description that will give you two different resources. The first one is a weight allowance calculator and this just allows you to put in your rank and put in how many dependents, family members that you're bringing and it'll tell you what your actual weight allowance is. And the second is a weight estimator. And all this does is just give you a rough estimate of how much things weigh in your house. Okay, some quick tips before we get into all the different checklist items for unaccompanied baggage. Uh, the first tip is the voltage overseas. So in the United States, we're all used to 110 volt. That's what the standard voltage is in all your electronics that you have. In Europe, it's 220 volt or higher. So in order to be compatible with the Europe voltage standards, you're either gonna need all new appliances that are 220 volt and compatible with Europe, not likely, or you're gonna have to get a transformer, which is this big, heavy, clunky device that allows you to literally plug your 110 voltage appliance in uh, and then plug that into the 220 volt wall. Or your government house is gonna have to have 110 and 220 volt options inside of the home. Most of the government houses on and off base do have this feature, uh, not all of them, um, but if you wanna look at more houses and take a look at the options that are available out here in Germany, I have also created a bunch of videos on that. Okay, moving on, a couple other little tips here. Put all of your liquids, spices, and anything else that is gonna make a mess uh, in your suitcase or anything that's being boxed up, uh, put that in a Ziploc bag. That will definitely help you out if there's any spills or if um, anything gets shaken around inside the box there. Okay, last little tip here. If you are planning on using a streaming service to entertain yourself or the kids like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, 
uh, while you're en route to your new duty station overseas, I would download the show that you want to watch first before you travel. Um, once you do that, I would also disconnect from Wi-Fi, try to go to that show that you've already downloaded and see if it works without Wi-Fi. That way you can make sure that when you get on the plane that all that stuff that you downloaded is ready to go and ready to watch. Nothing is worse than downloading all these shows or banking on Wi-Fi to use a streaming service and it doesn't work on the plane. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be referencing uh, my checklist that I've already created um, right here on my phone, so forgive me for looking up and down here, um, but let's get into it. So, clothing. You're going to need about three weeks of seasonal clothing. The weather here in Germany changes literally every 30 minutes, so I'd be prepared for all elements. Um, be aware of the, the month that you're coming in, right? So if you're coming here in the fall, make sure that you're going to have some winter clothing as well. Um, and then also like if you're, in, you're coming in the spring, make sure that you're going to have some summer clothes uh, ready to go as well too. All right, plenty of socks, shoes, undergarments. That's a no-brainer. A few jackets and coats. Like I said, Germany weather changes all the time. Um, it rains a lot here, so make sure you do have a jacket or, or a lightweight jacket ready to go for you. And then if you're coming uh, near the winter time, then I would definitely bring a, a large coat as well. Military gear. I'd bring all your military gear that you're going to need um, while you're working because once you actually get here, that is definitely something that you're going to be wearing every single day. Hangers and an ironing board. You might want to bring that. Okay, so kitchen items. Uh, your basic cooking items. I'd be prepared to bring one of everything kitchen related. So a mixing bowl, a spatula, a large spoon, Pyrex dish, a crock pot, air fryer. Um, pots and pans, a blender, can opener, kitchen towels, um, oven mittens, baking pans, toaster, coffee maker, um, some of your favorite spices, a sharp knife, etc. etc. I wouldn't bring your, your basic kitchen items, I would definitely bring that stuff because you probably will be cooking uh, when you first get here and you want to make sure that you have all your kitchen items ready to go. Tupperware, paper, plastic, plates, and utensils. Make sure you bring that stuff. A few cups, bowls and silverware, napkins and paper towels, and that one kitchen item that you just cannot live without. For me, that's an air fryer. Okay, your kids. So your kids are gonna need, just like you, are gonna need clothes for up to three weeks, and they also might need uh, their school clothes as well if they're gonna be in school uh, when you guys arrive here. Uh, their favorite toys, blankets and pillows, uh, a crib or your pack and play, baby seat, high chair, diapers, any type of wipes that you may need, um, a baby carrier or stroller, uh, electronic games uh, and or a tablet, formula, books, puzzles, board games, and the little bouncy swing thing. Okay, electronics and games, a small TV, power strips, extension cords, a tablet and or DVDs, if that's still a thing. Gaming system, like your Xbox, your Playstations, uh, extra chargers for your phone and other electronics. Make sure that you bring extra chargers. Plug converters, so like I said earlier, uh, the plugs are now a little bit different. You're used to the 110 voltage plugs and now they're the 220 voltage plugs. Plug converters are a little bit confusing though because if you have something that's 110 volt and you just put a plug converter on there and try to plug it in, it's still not gonna work. It'll still blow up. Um, it'll plug into the wall, uh, but it, it'll blow up because it's not 220 volt compatible. So the only way that you can use your 220 volt plug converter is if you have a 110 volt to 220 volt electronic device that has the normal um, US uh, plug on it, you take that and you take a small plug converter, connect it, and then you're able to actually use that overseas. That makes sense? Okay, let's talk about linens. You're gonna need towels, uh, bedding items, such as blankets, pillows, and sheets that you may need uh, when you first arrive into your home and you don't have uh, your own bed yet. Foldable laundry basket. Detergent and dryer sheets. And then an air mattress and comforter. Your bathroom. If the moving company allows, bring all your shampoos and soaps and skincare. Uh, that you can't find overseas. And remember, when you're shipping that stuff, I would definitely put that in Ziploc bags so that all that liquid and stuff doesn't get all over the boxes and all over your other stuff. Toilet paper, Q-tips, 
So all of your beauty products, your face masks, your bath bombs, and your lotions and potions. Okay, and then a bunch of miscellaneous items. So your bikes, uh, your electric scooters, and skateboards, a vacuum, very important, workout gear, fishing gear, tools, folding chairs, scissors, you always need scissors, fans. A lot of these homes out here in Germany do not have AC. Actually, none of these homes out here uh, in Germany have AC, so I would definitely bring a fan with you. Okay, let's go over the personal luggage now. This is all of the stuff that you're gonna bring actually with you on the plane. So the very first thing are all your important documents. So important documents include your orders, a hard copy of your orders, a soft copy of your orders, just in case you need to print um, out any extras, but make sure you uh, have a bunch of your orders available and ready to give out to whoever you need to give it out to. Uh, let's see, all of your legal documents, including your driver's license, your marriage certificate, your social security cards, uh, birth certificates, adoption paperwork, green cards, divorce paperwork, power of attorney, living wills, etc., etc. All of your passports. There is a ton of different passports that you, not a ton, but there's, there's several passports that you need to get. Uh, if you need some help with passports, I got a video for that as well. So anyways, you're gonna need all those different passports and your original US citizenship or naturalized document and vaccine cards if necessary. All military and dependent IDs. All of your official records, so including your medical and school records, uh, transcript for kids, uh, mammograms, x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, etc. All of your travel reservations, including your rental cars, your hotel, U-Haul, whatever you're using. Vehicle titles, insurance cards, uh, registration, loan agreements, anything that has to do with your car or shipping your car overseas. An external hard drive with all of your back up pictures and important um, documents or anything that is super important to you and it's on the computer as a file I would definitely put that on an external hard drive and I would carry that physically with you you will be devastated if you get to your new duty station and your external hard drive or your computer that you brought uh, is broken or damaged or lost uh, when the movers have moved it from one place to another. So I would definitely, definitely put all of your important stuff that's on your computer on a hard drive, an external hard drive, and then bring that with you. Jewelry. So this isn't a document, but I would consider hand carrying any of your um, high ticket item jewelry stuff with you, just in case it gets lost or stolen, and then any other like paperwork that goes along with that jewelry. Spare keys. Uh, consider hand carrying any of those spare keys that you may need to a car or a lockbox or that important thing uh, that you need a lock for. Okay, back to your personal luggage. So now you're also gonna need two to three weeks of clothes, just like you needed for your unaccompanied baggage. I would also be packing clothes with you physically to bring with you on the plane so that you have clothes, obviously, when you land. Um, and some of the clothes that you might wanna think of are job interview clothes, uh, school clothes, one set of every military uniform, special events like uh, ball gowns or change of command, uh, anniversary, birthday, special dinner, uh, clothes that you wanna wear with your hubby or something like that. Medicines and first aid kit. Multiple phone chargers. A pillow, blanket, snacks for the plane. Games or electronics to keep yourself busy, to keep the kids busy. Uh, if you're in quarantine, you have this available. Noise canceling headphones, just in case there's some loud snorers or loud people on the plane or you wanna listen to your music without being bothered by anything else distracting you around you while you're traveling. Uh, hygiene, so any type of toiletries, wet ones, uh, disinfectant cleaning supplies, anything that you need to clean your area around you when you're traveling. Tiger balm or lavender oil. This is one that my wife made me put on this list, but it's actually, it's come in handy um, since we've moved over here and, and since we travel a lot. Um, but basically you take this oil, this lavender oil or this tiger balm, and you can apply it to your wrist or literally put it right underneath your nose. Uh, we all know that when you get on a plane full of you know 200 people that there's gonna be some smells that you don't wanna smell or maybe your neighbor stinks or your kids stink. Uh, if you put this, for example, you put a little bit of tiger balm right underneath your nostrils, you won't smell anything but the tiger balm. Uh, same goes with any type of lavender oil. 
Um, I know they actually um, have bracelets that they make for and jewelry they make for, for women where you can put this on your wrist um, and you can kind of reapply it. Um, but basically you would do the same thing. You put it on your wrist uh, and smell it just to get rid of all the other odors and smells that you don't want to smell on the plane. Okay, go to the travel size section of like a Walmart or a Target or a small convenience store and look at the small travel size section for any type of ideas or things that you may need on the plane that could come in handy. Bring that favorite movie that you have played a hundred times over and over and over on repeat for your kids to put them in the matrix so that they can chill out. Essential baby supplies, essential pet supplies, snacks, poop bags, things like this. And then obviously your wallet, your phone, and your purse. So last but not least, your HHG, your household goods. Uh, so I'm not gonna go over all the different items that you need to bring in your household goods just because that would take forever everybody has different things in their home basically this is everything else um, so if you've PCS before then you obviously know what your HHG is it's basically everything else that the movers are going to pick up and take with you uh, to your next duty station I will tell you though what I would not bring I would not bring any large appliances like a washer and dryer for example uh, they have that stuff over here in Germany that housing will provide for you once you get set up with your house but what I will do is I am going to tell you how to prepare uh, for uh, packing up your HHG stuff. So in my checklist that I have, uh, that I've created my ultimate PCS checklist, I've created an actual home inventory list. Basically what I've done is organize uh, inventory by each room. And organization is the key to winning this game. So here's what I'll recommend. Preparing for your moving day. Wake up early, empty the dishes uh, from the dishwasher, finish all your laundry, gather all outdoor equipment um, that needs to be packed away, right? That's the first thing. Uh, ensure that someone will be home all day or make sure that uh, your kids are not in the way. So if you have someone that can watch the kids on this day, this is very important because you wanna make sure that uh, you are aware of everything going on in your home. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. There's gonna be a lot of people in and out of your home taking stuff out. Uh, so make sure that you are paying attention to the movers and what's going on in your home. Double check that all important documents, your personal luggage, your unaccompanied baggage are clearly separated from the regular HHG items. So that's very, very important. So if you want stuff to go away with unaccompanied baggage, which is like your expedited baggage, make sure that is in one area and that it's labeled unaccompanied baggage. Personal luggage, all the stuff, all the important docs, stuff that you're gonna bring with you, that needs to be in another location, and then everything else will be HHG. Okay, take pics and or videos of all of your expensive furniture in the event of something getting lost, stolen, damaged. You wanna make sure that you have pictures of all that stuff just in case you need to set up any claims, file claims for later. Put small items in a Ziploc bag for organization. So like the stuff in your junk drawer, your loose screws, all the remotes. I always lose remotes. Double check every corner of the house, inside and out, to make sure that everything is gone and accounted for and leaving. Walk with the mover to each little section of your home to make sure that they have taken everything from all the different rooms. Have a Sharpie or labels ready uh, to mark boxes with notes or initials in the case of misplaced boxes. It never hurts to um, give your own little signature or initials uh, on a box to uh, to signify or to make sure that it is yours. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna kinda go into this home inventory list that I have uh, created. So I would consider placing colored duct tape on different sections of your house just so that you can be organized with what box goes where when you finally get to your duty station and you're unpacking all these different boxes. So for example, all the stuff in your kitchen, say that you wanna put a blue piece of duct tape on all those different boxes. Well now when you get to your duty station and they're, deliver, they're unpacking all those different boxes, you see all the blue boxes with the tape and you can just throw that all into the kitchen. Green boxes can go outside, um, you know, red boxes can go to the master bedroom, etc, etc. Uh, so if you're interested in this home inventory list and or this entire uh, checklist that I've gone over in, with regards to your baggage, unaccompanied personal luggage and HHG, I've already created that for you. So I'll leave a link in the description to my ultimate PCS checklist. 
um, and basically it's a organized checklist with all of the stuff that I've already been talking about with regards to baggage. It's got the home inventory list in there, plus a ton of other stuff to help you get the ball rolling and to relieve some stress for you as you're starting to PCS and transition over here overseas. So um, that was a lot of information. I hope that has helped uh, you or uh, turn the light bulb on for some different ideas and things that you can do to help you get yourself prepared. Uh, if you have any questions or you have some more stuff that um, maybe I didn't mention that you're kind of going through right now or experiencing right now, leave a link uh, in, in the comments and let me know. Um, I will update my checklist and I'll update uh, this video uh, so that the next person that's PCSing, they can have a little bit more information and be a little bit more prepared. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and yeah, good luck. Peace.